Hi guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and it's Wee Wednesday once again. And what do we have today but to look at a orange piece of G10. <laughs> it's a dog tag knife, chisel grind. The model is ZD008 by HX Outdoors. And of course, we all know that Z is the correct way to say that last letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Trying to pick a fight with my American friends. Come on up here to Canada and, and let's have it out, eh? You can uh, save all that money with a great exchange rate. Do your vacationing up here in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. And uh, I'll show you around while you correct my uh, pronunciation of the letters. <laughs> nice small little knife. You can get it in, they call it silver or orange. Of course, it's more like a off-white. Slip joint knife. Uh, a detent slip joint, and uh, it's just a very good keychain size knife um, in terms of its size. And if you watch this video, you'll be able to see if it's an effective knife as a cutter. And uh, it has to do that if you want to use it right. Can't just look good; it has to cut well. So stick around for the full review of the HX Outdoors ZD-008. I would like to move the camera a little bit closer, but there wouldn't be any room for my hand. Like my hand just barely fits underneath between the camera and the surface. So I will lift it up on occasion and hopefully get a good closer shot like this. So here you can get the first really good look at this knife. What we've got is a saber grind or a high flat grind. Um, it's totally flat on one side. So really, it's a chisel grind to start with, but that chisel grind, you know, has a high flat main grind here, uh, a nice swedge here and a swedge there. Uh, let's call it a Warncliffe uh, because it comes down like this to a flat edge. So a Warncliffe chisel grind, uh, nice elongated hole here uh, to be the opening hole. You know, you put your thumb in there and open it up. Um, you can open and close it with one hand. And it works. Ow! No, it doesn't. It works just fine until you pinch yourself right in that spot right there, which I just did with uh, this part of my finger right there. More like a surprise than anything. It didn't actually really hurt, but it got my attention. You don't want to get a cut in that part of your flesh right there on your fingers. This knife, as you can see labeled right there, is Os 8 Steel which is a lot like 440B. You know, Aussie, it's pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. Usually comes into a Rockwell hardness of uh, 57, 58, something like that. We've got a stone wash on the flats. So they stone wash this steel first, and then they ground the final grinds and left it with a satin finish on, uh, you know, the swedges here and on the main grind there. And then you've got a final bevel across the bottom here. Uh, let's see the details. I already told you. Os 8, 57 to 58 Rockwell hardness, satin finish, uh, G10 handle scale here. Actually, the handle, it's not a scale. Uh, and G10 is strong enough to be a good handle material. You don't need a liner per se. Um, G10 is really, really strong stuff. And then it's got this arm here for a, uh, a spring detent. Uh, this arm has uh, a little bit of tension to lift up towards the camera right here. So it's flat like this and it's lifting up towards there. That's what the pressure is. A little detent ball. And uh, that detent ball is, if I have the have it like this, the detent ball right now is just under that S on, on OS 8. And so you can tell that the detent slides along just inside this edge right here and all the way around that way. And that's what sort of keeps it in place. There's a little detent hole that holds it closed. And then another detent hole that holds it right there. And then you've got this pin here, which basically is functionally made a lot like a thumb stud. But it's the stop pin for right there. And it's also the stop pin for when it's closed. So that pin acts for both spots, open and closed. That's as, that's as close as I can get with this camera to get it to focus. 
And so that's the back of the nut, and there's the logo HX Outdoors. That has a post coming up here, and the post ends with the female threaded end, and you can get this screw that goes down into it to hold it shut. You've got a big sort of rounded washer here, and then inside, just next to the blade on either side, are two phosphor bronze washers. One on either side, they're quite thin. Uh, I did take it apart, and it's actually quite tricky to take it apart because uh, it wants to turn along. There's no D-shaped rod here. It just is a free spinning thing. And so I had to use uh, pliers to sort of clamp onto the outside edges, to clamp onto the outside edges, you know, where my fingernails are right now. And I had to grab it that way with the pliers, and then I could undo this. But they used some kind of thread locker, which made it quite tricky to do. And then when I was in there, I forgot to take pictures, but I'm not taking it up apart again. I don't want to scuff up and scratch this, uh, the outside edges of this. So I'm not going to do it again. You'll have to trust me that there's phosphor bronze washers in there. And if you think I'm a liar, why are you watching me anyways, right? So there you go. And um, there's their logo for HX Outdoors right there. Well, their other logo their, uh, with the Chinese characters for their name. And, you know, that's their logo. It's some kind of ungulate, some kind of deer family critter. And uh, these two screws hold this detent arm in place. And that's the extent of it. Those two screws, the screw for this pin, and then the main screw on the pivot. G10 and the blade. Very, very simple setup. The G10, let's see if I can, there you go, oh, it's very good to see it in that picture. You can see that there's a bit of a piece that comes up, sticks out a little bit right here, and that's to guard the edge so that when you rub your hand or whatever over top of this, it's not going to catch on this cutting edge and cut yourself. So that's really good. So they designed it for right-hand use. Um, it can work in left hand as well. It's not going to um, cut as well this way as it does this way for some people. Some people actually says it cuts better for them cutting something this way. Let's use an example. So I got some paper, and some people say they can cut better going this direction. So using the flat side of the chisel and, you know, coming in and... You know, trying to cut something that way. Some people say that works better, and other people say it works better to come from this side and cut through. Either way, this is not a very good grind here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's do the dimensions, and then we'll talk about what I like and don't like about this knife. Uh, the cutting edge, the great big sharpener's trail right there that it ends in, so the cutting edge is this flat area right here. 4 centimeters, 1.6 inches. Uh, the blade thickness, so between my fingers, 2.9 millimeters, 0 0.11 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, for where my thumbnail is to the other side of this steel, is uh, 0 0.55 millimeters, which is 0 0.021 inches, which I usually call that a really good EDC behind the grind thickness. But, that's the thickness that it is off of just one bevel, not off of two bevels. You know, if you had two, that'd be over a millimeter thick. So that tells you something about how good that is or isn't. If you can follow my logic, that, that'd be 1.1 millimeters behind the grind if it had a, you know, dual bevel grind. Handle length, so that's, uh, you know, between my nails, between these two rounded points here, 6.7 centimeters, which is 2.6 inches. Uh, the grip area, which I'm calling this flat area between my thumbnails there, uh, 5.3 centimeters, 2.1 inches. The handle thickness, so that's, I'm measuring it where the thickest spot is, where this extra material is right there is 4.3 millimeters, 0 0.17 inches, very thin. You know, it is a dog tag style. Uh, the length of the knife when it's open is 11.1 .1 centimeters, 4.4 inches. And this thing weighs 30 grams, just over an ounce, 1.1 ounces. There is a piece of leather. I think it's fake leather, just a short uh, eight inch piece or so that's tied in through this hole 
when you buy it. You can see it in the pictures if you look at uh, GearBest website. Uh, and you can buy this knife through GearBest. I've got links in the description below. Uh, $9.80 US to buy this knife. If this is the only thing you purchase, you're going to pay $2 shipping if you're in the United States. In Canada, uh, us Canadians, we're going to have to pay $13.51 for this. In Canadian dollars, of course. Uh, $2.84 shipping. If we buy multiples, that shipping price goes down and often goes away if we buy three or more of, you know, just about anything. A total of three or more items. And uh, that's the good thing about GearBest is, you know, the shipping price that you see on the things sometimes goes away if you buy a little bit more stuff. They do have to make some of their money back since they've got pretty much the lowest prices usually. Uh, not always, but for the most part, GearBest's prices are better than the rest. And so they have to sometimes add a little bit of shipping in order to keep that uh, their prices reasonable enough to make money. So what do I like and not like about this knife? I already started talking about that thick edge there. That thick edge behind the grind means that it's challenging to uh, cut with this knife. Uh, if you can get it started, you know, then you can cut pretty good. Uh, if I hold the paper, I can pierce and cut. Now that works you know, well enough. But as you can see right there, it doesn't cut super cleanly. You know, you've got little fibers coming out and sticking out. And it's just not that super sharp. And this is actually slightly sharper than it was from the factory. I stropped it a bit just to see if I could uh, get it to improve a little bit from what it was. It was okay from the from the factory, but see, as you can tell, sometimes I try to cut and it just isn't gonna, it just doesn't start to grab. And in large part, it's because that is so thick and the angle is so wide. I held it in this angle and put it underneath my USB microscope, and I'll show you a shot of what the tip area looks like from this perspective. What you can see is that final grind there is at 40 degrees, four zero. That is very steep. I'm thinking if that was 30 or 25 even, uh, that would be a much better angle. Uh, you'd, it'd be thinner. I think it would cut a whole lot better. You know, it still can cut okay. Um, let's use this, um, one inch thick, one inch wide, not thick, one inch wide uh, banding, and I can show you how well it cuts. It just missed on the end there, and so, you know, that's not bad. I would like it to cut better, but that's not bad. And uh, let's put this wood down here so we can see if it slices okay. Yeah, see, it slices okay, because that edge is pretty good, pretty sharp, but I want more. I always want more. You see that cut through, and I'm going to hold that, and I can slice through that. This paracord, I don't remember what it is. One, two, three, four. That's a seven-strand paracord that I just cut there. 550 paracord, seven strands. So it's not that bad. It's not that bad of a cutting edge, but I want it even better. So the next time that I sharpen this knife, the first time that I sharpen this knife, um, I'm not going to use my uh, work sharp because I don't want to try to do a convex edge or half a convex edge. Um, I'll use my uh, Lansky type system, you know, where I clamp it on and I'm going to take that angle down and take it down to, I'm going to try it at 30 degrees first. And if that doesn't quite cut well enough, I'm going to move it down to about 25 degrees for a cutting edge, and I think that'll make it a whole lot better. OS 8 is soft enough that it won't take that long to sharpen it. It won't be that difficult. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna end up with a really nice edge because I really like this thing in every other aspect. Uh, a, little lo a little knife like this, I don't need it to be a locking knife. Um, many times I'm gonna be holding it by the blade. It's one of the reasons I like this long elongated hole here. Uh, because I put my finger on either side and get quite secure and then put my fingers underneath here and hold it in this way for a lot of my cutting, either right-handed or left-handed. It works very well either way and it's a very secure way to hold it and you can get lots of good detail work done. 
Um, of course, you can cut like I did before when I was holding it this way to cut through that uh, one inch wide banding. And uh, you can hold it this way as well. Likes and don't likes, I'll continue. This sharpener's toil is a really good idea. In execution, it's bigger than it needs to be. You know, but that's not, that's fine. That's not a problem at all. Um, I like its weight. I like its look. I like, uh, you know, the steel is okay for the price, you know, being $10 US knife. Um, it's a good knife. I recommend it. It's a really simple little thing, a nice good price. The only thing is, if you haven't got a good way to sharpen it, to make that bevel a little bit uh, of a sharper angle, that final bevel, it's probably not going to satisfy you in a lot of ways, and it's going to make cutting a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. So that's what I want to tell you about this knife. If you want to buy one, uh, go ahead and use my links to GearBest and grab one of these. I'm going to get probably 10 cents off of your purchase, and that will go towards helping Canadian Cutting Edge continue to get knives from vendors and other suppliers and manufacturers that don't either give free knives to reviewers or sell knives at a lower price to reviewers. Uh, there's a few um, companies that will sell to me at about a 60% off price. And so the little bit of money that I make through GearBest uh, goes towards that. Uh, this channel is still way too small to be a channel where I get rich. <laughs> that doesn't happen at all. Um, I'm getting roughly $100 in commissions from all my GearBest sales um, per month. Um, and that's, you know, very good. And from my YouTube advertising, I make about $3 a month. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I'm just being open and honest about, uh, my YouTube channel and how much money I make because I do ask for your support. And so you might as well get a actual honest picture of, uh, of YouTube. I know a lot of people have the wrong idea that YouTubers make loads of money hand over fist. And there are some that do, but for the most part, us smaller channels aren't really making money on this. It's, uh, we're spending money to do this for you guys. Um, and for ourselves because, you know, we're, we do this because we enjoy it. Uh, we don't do this to get, uh, wealthy. Uh, you basically have to have way north of a hundred thousand subscribers to start making money. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. Please let me know what you think of this knife, what you think of this video, any questions that you have, any ideas, and go ahead and tell me that the grind on this chisel knife is reversed and it should be the other way. Um, go ahead and do that if you want to, but you know, it is what it is and it's not going to change just because uh, you want it to be something different. <laughs> so remember, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.